breathing of the beginning, middle, end. The problem I have, what is the distinguish, distinguish between end and the beginning? Uh, 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 distinction between end and beginning is in both uh, there is a little pause when one you breathe in when that breath is complete there is extremely brief pause and then next inhaling begins and when inhaling is complete there is a brief pause, the exhaling begins. Pause is so quick, so brief, that most of the people do not notice that brief pause. And therefore, as Buddha said, Manasikara Sambhavasa Vedamma, only when you pay mindful attention, the Dhamma or mental state you can notice any mental state you can notice only if you pay mindful attention. This is more than mental state, this is a physical. The pause between inhaling and exhaling is physical because the breath is physical object. And even that you don't notice if you do not pay attention. That is why paying attention absolutely attention is absolutely necessary. You all know when you cannot pay attention to even in your class, you not learn. When you don't pay attention to anything, you really don't know it very clearly. In this case, it is more so. When you only pay attention, can you see this force between inhaling and exhaling. Uh, uh, that is why Buddha emphasized uh, paying attention in uh, uh, practice. Uh, so you can see this the difference between uh, in a pause between inhaling and exhaling. And you can even this pause is uh, Changing pose, it is not a fit pose. Uh, nothing is stopped there. But the movement of the out has this very brief moment. Here is a pose, it's just a moment. It is a fact of time. That time factor itself is not something material. Only when you pay attention, you will become aware of it and then you move on. And when your attention becomes so sharp, so clear, you can even notice this brief pause, brief, brief time. And we, you have to have a kind of uh, awareness to understand uh, changes or impermanence. And this is another example of not having anything permanent. This so-called pause disappears uh, as it as quickly as it appears. So I think uh, that's all time we have for this morning to answer questions. Now let us begin our practice. In our practice, I repeat the same thing every day instructions on meditation must be the same so that every day when we sit to meditate we can follow those instructions and remember them without even I don't give or anybody is there to if anybody is not around to give you instructions, you should be able to remember the instructions and follow it. For this purpose, and also the very practical reasons, I 
repeat the same steps, three steps at the beginning. I said we must practice metta. We practice metta to overcome our resentment or anger. As exactly as Buddha mentioned in Satipatthana Sutta, Abhijja Dhomanasang, Vinaya Loke Abhijja Dhomanasang, Loke means this mind and body, Vinaya means disciplining, controlling, Abhijja means uh, intense greed, and Dhomanas means grief or disappointment or anger. So, We want to uh, repeat these instructions to overcome anger is one of the hindrances and impediment in our meditation practice, in even in our daily life. Then intense uh, greed uh, also make our life very unhappy. And when we when we control them, uh, then our practice becomes easier. For this reason, we start with metta, and then we get into mindfulness practice, which also is absolutely necessary, because in mindfulness practice, you can see changes, impermanence, no self, and then finally we gain contemplation, which sharpens our insight to see subtlest changes taking in us, which we over which we don't have any control. No one has any control of what is happening to the body and mind. For this reason, we repeat the instruction. So first we start practicing metta. In friendliness. I like to recite until perhaps you might uh, memorize the passages of Metta Sutta that Buddha delivered in Pali. Now I recite in English as I normally do every day and try to pay total attention as I mentioned earlier. Paying attention is absolutely necessary to get a true, deep, subtle meaning of these words. May all beings be happy and secure. All beings have happy minds. Whatever beings there may be, with exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have in minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere. Neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so, towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate all the world, heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hate or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down no way awake, one should develop this mindfulness, this is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision, removing desires for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the womb. These are wonderful metta thoughts, this thought in the background, let us begin our focus in mind on the breath. Take when you breathe in and out, you will see the breath is changing its, its length. Sometimes it is long, sometimes it is short. You don't do it deliberately, but it happens. 
when the lungs are tired, then it changes the 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 cortical length, and then you can see the beginning, middle, and end of inhaling, and then the pause, then beginning, middle, and each exhaling. So note that inhaling begins, and this happens very very normally naturally don't do deliberately anything let it happen naturally then we see the breath becoming subtler and subtler calmer and calmer and the body becomes calm relaxed and peaceful as the result mind also becomes calm, relaxed, peaceful, and one-pointed of concentration we gain. The degree of concentration may not be very deep this time, but whatever concentration we gain, it gain, we gain that in this way. And therefore, and during that time, mind becomes totally clean and pure of all hindrances and all obstacles, impediments.
between the inhale and exhale appears to be getting longer. If the gap is getting longer, is uh, the way your breath becomes slower, when breath becomes slow and slower and slower, subtler and subtler, even the gap, even the gap becomes so subtle, so insignificant that you do not feel the gap. It is a matter of not feeling the gap. Because of the subtlety of your breath. And therefore, I would um, uh, suggest you continue your awareness of subtlety of your breath, softness and gentleness, and then good eventually lead up to a moment that you won't feel bread at all. So then you gain concentration. Before gaining concentration, the deep concentration, there uh, are so variation of breathing, pause, and so on becomes very clear. Once you gain deep concentration, not only do not notice the gap, not only it becomes longer, but even you may not notice the breath at all. Okay. There's a a question in the chat room, uh, Bhante. Uh -huh. uh, Bhante just mentioned realize, realization of non-self. 
don't have control over our body and mind, may I ask how to understand or observe our intention to do something is not self, not our control, neither. Since I feel when I intend to do something at, at that moment, I am proactive to choose A, not B. At that moment, I'm controlling, directing the body and mind. Was the mind entity or conditions that able to, that able to let intention to arise initiatively, it, it's not I behind. Yes. Uh, it is uh, not the I that makes that uh, prompt you to make a decision. You desire, you desire wants something, and therefore you intend to do that particular thing. That is the changing impermanent mental state. Once you have this intention, when you complete what you intend to do, then intention disappears. For instance, uh, you in, intend to uh, move your left hand or to get up. Once you got up, that intention is no longer there. Another intention will have to do something else. So it is that intention Behind that intention is a desire, a wish, a wish to do such and such. And that wish and desire is not something permanent. The notion of I is something permanent. Intention, movement, uh, attention, and so on are not uh, also so called will is not something permanent. It changes. In another example, suppose you want to uh, come to Bhavana, you start from your home. And the moment you wish to come here, and if you get ready and leave, and uh, that intention, once you come here, intention to come here is gone. You have another intention, of course, many more intentions might have in the, the way. In particular, intention to come to Bhavana, we end when we reach Bhavana. Or oh, what we call intention. Or we, and therefore, this is a desire uh, functioning in many, many different ways. Uh, and there were not that uh, is not any permanent entity or self. Okay. And everyone having trouble hearing us today. Connection not good. Not good. Uh, but anyway, let's press on. Uh, you all have difficulty in or not at all. Yes, Bante. Yeah. Huh? Your voice is breaking up when you talk. Ah, the same here. Maybe the same our, here. Yes, our internet service is not very good. That is problem in on my end. As we live in a, a remote area, at least thirty miles. Yeah, 
this is good. Especially I am doing all this from my room. Internet service in my room is even worse. And yet, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. I was mentioning to them, Bante, that it's a windy day and we have saddle internet. Exactly part of the issue today. Can you go to a Wi Fi? Click there. Could, but no, it, click, it's, click, click and it's see. risky. No, turn on to Wi Fi. And oh, no, no, leave it off, leave it on. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Can you read the message we post on the site? Hold on, let me see what people are writing. Somebody say yes, yes. Oh, it's, they can hear you, it's just not very clear. Uh, it is a windy day here. Uh, it is windy here too, very windy. Yeah. It's raining uh, oh, in New York. Some people are saying. We we turned the video off, and you all told us that it wasn't. It didn't solve the problem. I can try again. Brian, maybe if everybody turns their videos off, might help. Okay, does everyone want to try that? We can try that as an experiment. Okay. I have all of your videos off now. So how is the sound, Bhante, can you say something? Yes, now can we ask? I think it's a little better. A little better. It's actually better on our end too. Oh, I think, uh, yeah, we can see yes, yes, yes from, uh, Better. Yes, it's better yes. now. Yes. Hi. Hi. Yeah, okay. Sure. So we keep it uh, that way. Uh, uh, yes. Any other question? There's a Chinese. There's so many. Uh, oops. Hi, here's one. I have this conflict sitting in my comfortable room and not doing anything meaningful to solve the problem. How can I resolve this problem? <laughs> what problem? Yeah, what's... Uh, Hearing problem? Is video problem? I don't know if that was related to the audio or if maybe the person is talking about not practicing. Hello. Yeah, I can. Yes. Is that Lauren? Yes, this Lawrence? is. Can you can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Lawrence. Okay. Yeah, my question is related to meta. I can sit and talk about meta or think about meta, but I don't feel I'm really doing anything meaningful sitting in this comfortable room and just talking about meta, thinking about it. I feel 
I'm like a double standard there. So I was wondering if there's a way I can resolve this conflict I'm having within myself. I think uh, Lawrence is uh, very uh, uh, common thing for some people. If uh, you determine to generate metta thoughts in your own mind, not only sitting a cushion while you are walking, eating, drinking, whatever activity you are engaged in, that time try to develop your metta thought and simply feel that there are so many suffering beings all over the world and we want all them to be peaceful, happy, free from suffering. You keep repeating these thoughts in your own mind all day long. Whenever you remember metta, just that moment you think how wonderful if all of us live in harmony, live without fear, live without anger, and be our friends, we all are friends, uh, no matter what differences we may have, and yet in the practice of metta, we all are one. You just uh, repeat this in your own mind. Uh, if it uh, doesn't work now, it definitely will work eventually one day when it happens, you will be thrilled to see the benefit of that feeling of metta. It is not very easy uh, uh, because uh, the practice is not very uh, steady and consistent and uh, practice not, uh, is not uh, repetitive. We got to repeat it again and again and again in our mind. When we go to bed, we must think, how can I help suffering being? When you get up in the morning, think, how can I help the world suffering beings? How wonderful we all live without these afflictions pain and suffering. This we, we forcefully generate this thought which turns into feeling eventually. Uh, so there is no uh, magic. Whenever angry thought, thought of resentment uh, and so forth arises, immediately become aware of it. This is what is called mindfulness. When we become mindful of whatever mental state we are, if it is negative, immediately we can switch on to positive, wholesome state. And this is uh, the training that we have to do again and again all day long. And then one day you will see that uh, that uh, you know, very stiff uh, sta state of mind and become soft and gentle and metta will uh, arise. Metta will, it is just like uh, trying to cultivate uh, uh, something on a rock. You cannot cultivate anything on a rock. But if you cultivate something in soft land, there it can grow. And similarly, we have to first make our mind soft and gentle by letting go of our resentment, and, you know, anger, and so forth. You can see anytime anger arises, you are unhappy. Anytime metta arises, you are happy. So from your own personal experience, you can 
develop the practice slowly and gradually. It may not happen very quickly, but it will eventually. <coughs> And uh, once again, friends, our time is limited. And uh, again, I want to uh, wish you all very peaceful, happy day. Those who are very much there may be a happy night. Uh, we, I wish them happy or good night. Others, I wish happy and good day. And I see you. Thank you, Pankaj. Thank you. 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 Thank